when when we showed this song to him in in DR, he was like, oh, ella me está amenazando en la canción. And I was like, you have to show her some love. And he was like, fuck that. <laughs> and then I was like, well, then I'm going to have to kill you in the video because you're not showing her any love. What do you think about the importance of artists collaborating together? And also like between genres, you know, like crossing Porn? over. No, like the importance. Like if it's important. yeah, yeah, I important. Heard porn. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like calm down, Angel. Yeah, yeah. Do you think it's really important? Cause, oh, <laughs> important <laughs> for artists. I did a song with Madonna. Fans of Madonna are like from a different era. They got to see me. They were like, all right, we fuck with that. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody knows Madonna. How dare she do Frida and Diego? No. How dare them? And then somebody said. Well, it's not so different because Frida used to fuck girls and then Diego used to fuck her sister. Yeah. Why? <laughs> uh, Drake pulled up in Miami, right? Mm -hmm. At 11 11. How was that meeting him? And the song is lit, lit, lit. Trying it's to get actually lit. called Quiero un Kilo. Oh, yeah? So it's like kilo time. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome back to another Agush Tababa podcast. As you what guys up? can see, we're in a new set. We are here at Sony Studios in Culver City with a very special guest, someone we never thought we'd ever interview. Honestly, right? never, but it's an honor yeah. for her to okay, be Okay, a here. round of applause for Tokisha. <laughs> hey. Hola. Hey, we're really excited to have you here. Um, you know, thank you for giving us the time. Thank you to everybody at Sony that lent us the space that thought of us for this interview. Um, you know, you guys are releasing this new single, uh, Kilos Amor, and um, it was a really yeah. badass yeah. song. <laughs> it, was a, it was a badass song. It and was a uh, collaboration with you and Nata. Obviously, uh, it's a corrido tombado. It's something different from the genre that you're used to. And maybe you could talk a little bit of how the creative process of making the song was, you know, come about. Did you like this song? Well, yeah. I, for, well, for me, mm -hmm. he liked I was it. Like he, loved it. he loved yeah, it. Yeah, like I played that like 40 times. <laughs> but um, one thing about me is, like, for those that don't know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Nata. And that's when I found out about you. So when I found out about, like, this interview, I started doing research on you. Mm -hmm. And then that's when yep. I started listening to your other music. And I was like, what the hell? Like, Anuel, like, Rosalia. Rosalia. Yeah. And, and like, Madonna, Marshall. too, which she's an icon. Oh, Madonna. So, uh, I mean, like, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty amazing. Thank you. And, yeah, I think this, this song with Nata is very special for me. I'm a big fan of Nata, too. And I really like what he's been doing, and also I'm a, I'm like um, I appreciate him as a person too, cause he's just like so sweet, and and like hanging out with him is like always so much fun. And the song it came up to me like basically before i met him oh, it really? was, i i had this this um the track just an empty um la pista vacia yeah. mm -hmm. with just the guitars and everything and i started to write on it and 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 i i felt that this when i started to write on it i was like oh but I have to do a verse that represent this passion that has the Mexican music that's um, like long lost love because Mexican music is very, very passionate when it comes to, to talk yeah. about feelings and all that. So, and then when, 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 when we showed this song to him in, in DR, and then he was like, oh, ella me está amenazando en la canción. I was like, you, you have to show her some love. And he was like, fuck that. <laughs> he didn't want to show her love in the song. Like, he was like, oh, tú me estás amenazando, pues vete. And I was like, I was so pissed. I was like, but she's not even, she's just telling you how much she loves you in the song. And he was like, what? And then I was like, well, then I'm going to have to kill you in the video because you're not showing her any love. You're, you're telling her that she can go and that you're leaving and all that. 
so it was like um, a fun moment, like when we were like creating the idea and like connecting and like I I don't know who broke his heart, <laughs> but he oh, didn't no. want to give her any love in the yeah. song. Yeah, I think that was something very unique and something that got my attention was that you know your verses were like no quiero que te vayas and like you know stuff like that and then Nata comes like. Me vale verga, like, <laughs> stuff like that. Now yeah. like damn. Tres muchachas and stuff like yeah, that. Showing no sympathy. And I also think in the music video, it, it really portrays that. Like, you guys, there's a fence in the middle, mm -hmm. and you guys are kind of, like, arguing between the fence, you know? And obviously, Nata shows a more aggressive of, like, oh, like, te voy a rechazar and type yeah, of thing, like, you know? Yeah, like, you don't care with two girls in there. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? I'm killing you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you and Nata meet? We met in the R. Um, I have no idea who arranged it, <laughs> but they <laughs> did. Up. And uh, after, of course, after I made the song, and then we met in the studio, and he really liked it, and he he started to you know work on his verse, and he was like he wanted to change the guitars and like give it like you know like his vibe. Yeah, to the, to the tumbado the, sound. How they yeah. say. Yeah. So yeah, and we've we've hang out. We've we've been in like same festivals in Mexico a few times, and yeah. And how do you like so Mexico? Because I do know that you guys shot the music video in Mexico City, right? Yeah. How do you like? I it? love Mexico. I love it. And you know what's so funny? Um, all Latino country grows up watching Mexico and listening to Mexico music. Yeah. When I first went to Mexico, I realized like, oh, like I grew up watching the novelas, all the novelas. listening to all, Toda la Balada de, de Ana Gabriel. I'm a big fan of Gloria Trevi. Oh. And when I went there that I saw like all the colors on the street, the people, just like he was on the TV. Yeah. And I was like, wow, it's really, really so colorful and so, so nice, you know? It's and like the culture novela. about the tacos too, all the, the food. music, the hats, everything. I think Mexico, it's like a very cultural and a special country yeah. itself. Yeah, very rich in culture. And uh, you said you had the track, um, you know, with the guitars and stuff, and it's a little bit different from what you normally do. Um, what made you want to do a song like this? Um, I, bec I became a, a fan of Nata when I started to listen to his music. And then it was um, one of my main, main producers, Cromo, oh, Cromo. who showed me this track. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I, I, that sounds really good. And he was like, if you, if you write a verse in this, we can get Nata to to get into it and i did and we did, <laughs> and it, did. i think it really it really worked out because you coming more of a like style of a reggaeton and then him coming from more traditional mexican it, it, it creates a mix and i think it gives people like an insight of of two different type of musics joining and mixing together and i think it really worked out yeah it's like more exposure you know sometimes we're used to one thing but then you know with these collaborations we are get exposed to new music and um you know talking about this collaboration what do you how what do you think about the importance of artists collaborating together and also like between genres you know like crossing the over porn? no like the importance like the if important. it's in, yeah yeah I heard porn <laughs> oh, <laughs> like calm down angel <laughs> he's like yeah yeah no. do you think it's really important because or oh, <laughs> important <laughs> for artists to collaborate together like that um you know it like elevates the genre it um you know and you also get new fans too you know crossing mm -hmm. over yeah it's very important and it's um es un trueque trueque un trueque i've never heard of that word <laughs> que es un trueque? trueque trueque lo hacían lo 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 indígena entre oh, okay. entre ¿Cómo es que se llaman la, la, la diferente, eh, su diferente como barrio que tenían? ¿Cómo es que se llama eso? 
Ajá, uh -huh, like the, the different villages, they will do un trueque, like if I had yuca in mi patio and you had plátano, we will do a trueque. I give you yuca oh, 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 yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, like a trade. Es un, es un trueque y es, es importante porque besides that it comes from like different parts of the world, it's different rhythm, different people, different, at that di era diferente because mm -hmm. I did a song with Madonna, fans of Madonna are like from a different era. Yeah, they are. And, and they got to see me, they were like, all right. We fuck with that. <laughs> 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 but everybody knows Madonna. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, she's a superstar. But yeah. I mean, it's cool that they get to expose to new sounds, you know? Yeah. And I feel like that's what Angel was trying to and say. And like, I feel like... Gets elevated. Corridos, tumbado, it's like... I love it. It's, it's, a, it's a vibe. And it's like the the present of the Mexi Mexican music mm -hmm. with like not so much drama <laughs> <laughs> as the music from the past uh, of, of, the, of the Mexican music. And yeah, Dembo, that's my, my music. It's uh, also the moment. Like a subgenre huh, of reggaeton. It's a little bit different because uh, um, we learned that it's only from the Dominican Republic, right? Yeah. Dembo, it's um, something that was created there. Yeah. So, reggaeton, I think they both come from Jamaica. Because uh -huh. I think reggaeton comes from, like, Jamaica, and then in Puerto Rico, they took reggaeton, and they made playero, and they made reggaeton, and, and, and they gave it a, a different vibe. If you listen to playero, from back in the days, it's literally the same Jamaican flow, but in Spanish. Oh, okay. Oh, really? And then um, in the Dominican Republic, we took it, and then we 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 gave it like Dominican, like like Puerto it's Rico vibe. gave it. Give it the taste, huh? <laughs> and I think w basically what we did in DR was to to put the. Um, What's it called? The VPN? Higher? VPN? To make the rhythm faster. Oh, okay, oh, yeah. Make it faster, faster, and, and, and yeah. It was just more upbeat. Upbeat, yeah. Yeah. Is there yeah. a possibility now that que sacas una canción con Nata en Corridos Tumbados, you might, he might go into reggaeton? Or Dembo. we'll be able to do another track with him in Corridos Tumbados? I would love, I would love to do another song with Nata. And that will be very interesting to have Nata to do un reggaeton or un dembo. I would like to see that. <laughs> I think, yeah. We all yeah, I think we'd all like to <laughs> see all yeah. how that works out. Something different in both different cultures just coming together in mm. Corridos Tumbados and the reggaeton and be something new. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Because, I mean, he, he does do trap, but obviously reggaeton and dembo is, like, totally different, you know? It's a yeah. different new sound. And it's so crazy, too, because I thought it was, like, him creating, like, the sound and everything and him inviting you. Yeah, I would have I thought actually, it was the other way around. Yeah, that's impressive, honestly. Mm. It is. Like, you had the, the track and the idea of it already. Yeah. And then he came onto it. So, it's props to that. And then talking about the music video a little bit, I saw that, you know, there's like a story behind it. With Frida and Diego Rivera. Whose idea was it? Mine. What was your idea? Really? Yeah. I'm a big fan of Frida. And I think that she's like, the strongest woman ever <laughs> <laughs> when you talk about arts she used to be so strong and she made the best out of her pain mm -hmm. she had a lot of physical pain yeah and she made great art out of it and she had this crazy love um she and diego and she was so passionate about it. And I think it's so inspiring. And, and it has a beautiful message of like making the great out of what you have, yeah. even yeah. though if it's painful. So yeah, I wanted to, I got really inspired with by that. And then I saw the other day that people were like, oh, how dare she? 
how dare she do Frida and Diego, oh, okay. how dare them? And then somebody said, well, it's not so different because Frida used to fuck girls and then Diego used to fuck her sister. So, 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 yeah. why? <laughs> oh. You know, so like they were just, they were great arti artists, but they were rock stars too. They were wild. It's a crazy shit, huh? Yeah, it's not like they were praying <laughs> and, and, and all that. Yeah, and talking about that, like, how do you deal with the criticism and the hate that your music gets? Um, easy. I I see it, you know, obviously, but I don't absorb it. I don't mm. I don't let it like get into me, into my head, into my feelings, because it's it's not relevant. It's not something that's gonna you know like fit me you know yeah. but if it's love i absorb it because obviously love will make you feel good yeah. but the hate even though it counts because mm -hmm. see it, it when they put a hating comment it goes it gets more attention yeah that's so weird when somebody make a hate comment or it's talking bad about something it gets more comments more likes and more views than when people is showing you love yeah that's crazy that's weird. and that's so weird just the how the way the internet is huh because if someone says hey you know this song is awesome and you know like those fire emojis i might get like two likes and mm -hmm. someone negative comment yeah it just starts yeah. that and you said it didn't get to you but at one point did it like when starting your career and you got hate did that get to you or you just never really like let it get to you mm, no the only moment when I started my career that I felt heard was when I needed support from mm -hmm. people oh, that yeah. I really, really needed that mm -hmm. support. Like, I need this, um, I need this, like, I need you to help me shoot this video. Mm -hmm. I need you to do this for me so I can, you know, go on my career. And people, and some people that I really, you know, um, were it really close to me were like oh no um that's not gonna go anywhere and that decided to hurt me but then i figure like you don't even know what i'm doing you don't have the vision that i have so why do i care yeah and then i think going from that and and learning that nobody it's having the same vision i have like that made me not care about what people like say later on though. like yeah so yeah and how was it that your career started like what got you into starting music and um pursuing this career um i i loved art since a little kid i i used to, to do acting dancing and all all that and then when i moved from my dad house I decided to relate to get related with the creative and artistic community in the art and that's when I met my manager Raimi and I started to make music with him he was the first person who took me to a studio I don't even think I knew what a studio was <laughs> <laughs> by that time I was I was, you know, I was creative. I was, you know, looking for a meaning in life, knowing that I had all this creativity, all this art, but I didn't have like a direction. So yeah. when I met him, we started to work on this project together. And yeah, that. Now we're here. <laughs> now we're here. Huh? And we do want to congratulate you on your tour, recent tour. We were we were told yes. that you sold out major cities. Yes. And I also saw that Drake pulled up in Miami, right? Mm -hmm. At eleven eleven. How was that meeting him? That's cool. were you expecting that? Yeah, did you know he was gonna come? Yeah, yeah. And um it was really cool. Drake, he's um he's a very down to earth person and we just met there and we had a few conversations right there and it was really meaningful 
mm-hmm. and yeah i think that's really cool because <laughs> um i think drake has a lot of influence to the world mm-hmm. in general and music and you know a person of that level to be at your concert you know looking at you i feel like that must be meaningful you know mm-hmm. yeah. and another highlight of uh, of your tour is that the first dominican to sell out the novo last month as part of your tour how do you feel with all the success <laughs> um it feels amazing it's like um having everything you've been working for and just it just impo- inspires you more because having success on this tour makes me want to make a better tour for next year like have a better show like like have you know a better connection with the fans so i'm very excited are we invited to the tour <laughs> 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 yeah, hopefully they go to that late show i think we very different for us home we don't think we've ever been to a concert like that no it would yeah, be, no. be i a saw different i saw some clips that went probably went viral on tiktok it was uh i think you i'm not sure what you were performing but you were dressed as a nun and i was like i had i had never I, well we've never been to a show like that so we'll see it's gonna it be in halloween for for halloween month i was dressing up for, for show. every show oh i see for halloween month we were too. <laughs> yeah, we were we were doing that for our podcast too, but yeah. but yeah. I mean, that'd be cool just to pull up and you know feel the energy of the concert because, like you said, it's something different, and then the it's more upbeat than bow. Am I saying it right? Dembo? Yeah, them dembo. dembo. And yeah. So you had started uh, with the plans for the next tour with the success of this one. Yeah. What can people expect for next year? For next year, I don't know. Um, a lot of like, like a like a a little. I want to make like a little movie for the tour, so it's gonna be really interesting and kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, like a little movie? Like a little movie, like a documentary? No, like 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 a live theater piece of show or well, no. like at the beginning i don't know it's weird <laughs> we have to wait and we have to wait and we'll find out <laughs> yeah and yeah and talking about that um is there any place where you're like i want to perform there one day um you don't want to have you know sold out every stadium <laughs> every, every stadium, stadium huh? <laughs> yeah todo estadio de todo lado. <laughs> Are we going to be expecting any new music coming out pretty soon? Yeah. Um, I have a new song coming out really soon with um, Martinez' brother. Do you know Martinez' brother? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> you will know. We will know. <laughs> like we will know. Oh, now. We but they are like iconic um, DJs. Oh, man. They do music electronica oh, wow. all That's around the world. And they're from Puerto Rico, right? Yeah, what thing? Lit, 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 lit. And the song is lit, lit, lit. Trying it's to get It's actually lit. called Quiero un Kilo. <gasps> oh, yeah? So it's like Kilo time. Yeah. <laughs> Where the Kilo oh, time? Yeah. <laughs> kilo <laughs> it's Kilo time. De amor, no. That's the same. Well, um, we want to thank you so much for your time. We know you have a very busy day today. Um, we want to thank you for the opportunity because we never thought we would be like interviewing yeah, yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Super amazing. We want to thank Sony and your team. And is there anything else you would like to say, you know, before we wrap up this podcast, like to the fans? I'm going to Mexico. I have a show in Mexico on the third, right? On the third. So I'm going to be there. Voy para México el 3. Un festival? Un festival, ¿verdad? Mm-hmm. A ver si nos invitan. Ah, vamos. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's on camera. Ya nos invitó. Yeah. Okay, guys, well, thank you so much for watching to the end. If you guys enjoyed this episode, make sure you guys give us a thumbs up, comment down below. Hopefully in the future we can film a longer podcast. You know, right now it's more in like depth. In depth. Getting more into like getting more to know you. Yeah. But thank you so much once again. And um Yeah. Thank you to everybody. Thank you to Sony. Thank you for your time and your and you know your answers. And we'll see you guys soon. Peace. Peace. Yeah. Peace.